What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity on the Hermitcraft server. So, uh, since last episode, we've been making more and more of those ultimate hybrid solar panels. In fact, I was able to craft four more of those earlier today before I started recording. Uh, so we have quite the operation going on over here. Let's actually fly to the outside of this building. Uh, we now have, what is that, 12? <laughs> yeah, we have 12 of these ultimate hybrid solar panels. We need eight of those to actually make the quantum solar panel. That's kind of what I'm looking at doing today. Uh, well, at least that's one of the things I want to do today because that's not going to take too long. So let's go ahead and look at the solar panel. Where are we in? The quantum solar panel. This guy. We want to make a quantum core. And in order to make one of those, we have to make this recipe. It does require some nether stars. We do have our nether star farm. So that's not a problem. Um, so let's go ahead and make one of these enriched scenario alloys. We need one of those for our recipe. So we'll go ahead and start that up. Actually, did that use a piece of iridium in that? I thought I saw. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> um, let's look right here. Enriched scenarium alloy. Is it the scenario? Oh, that uses eight pieces of iridium. Aha. Uh -huh. No, actually, that uses a bit more than eight, doesn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, so anyway, uh, I didn't realize it was that expensive, but if it's going to be using that much in all of these, I expect the quantum actually should be producing... 8,000 RF a tick? I hope so. I hope it's not just putting four or eight of these into one block. I hope it's actually going to double that output. We will find that out. So anyway, let's go ahead and craft up that recipe here. We need an Eye of Ender. Yeah, that's actually more expensive than I was expecting it to be. We might not be able to do that today unless we get a decent amount of iridium because we are now down to five pieces of iridium. Oh, no. Uh, so we're probably going to have to wait a little bit for our iridium supply to build up. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So we'll go ahead and make this pattern. We'll put this over here. And I guess we're going to have to play the waiting game to wait for a little bit more of that iridium to be produced. Let's take that down here. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of hoping, actually, that we would be able to make that right away. I didn't realize that part required <laughs> eight pieces of iridium each. So we definitely need, what is that, 24 more pieces of iridium. Uh, this stuff is going about as fast as it can right now. Um, yeah, the progress bar is going really quickly on this. We are producing scrap pretty quickly as well. This guy over here is still going kind of slow. Now, I did some testing earlier because I was not sure. Um, I wasn't sure like if we were stealing power from one and it wasn't going as fast as it could be. Uh, but what I ended up doing, let's actually come back here real quick. Whoop. We'll come back here. Let's disconnect the second one. This guy right here. This is the one that's going a little bit slower. So if we disconnect this guy, we come outside. We can look at these ultimate hybrid solar panels. Whoops. Yeah, if we look at these guys out here with that one disconnected, they are starting to gain power. And what I did is I broke all of these earlier and I placed them all back. So they all started out at zero. Um, yeah, so... Each one of these is gaining power, so we are producing more power than what our one mass fabricator can make. So we definitely need to have both of those connected, otherwise we're wasting a bit of power. Um, so if we connect that guy, yeah, the one's going to go slower. It's going to be using all the energy that isn't being used by the first one. And again, we can look at these ultimate hybrid solar panels out here, and they won't be gaining any power now. So we are now using more power than these guys are producing, which is... What we really want to see, we don't want to waste power by having them stored in the ultimate hybrid solars. Uh, so, we this one is going as fast as possible right now. And we are making the iridium as fast as we can right now, which is decently quick. It's a lot faster than it used to be. Uh, but I would still like to see this go faster yet. <laughs> so, yeah, it's still kind of like a waiting game. We are waiting on making more UU Matter before we can make our Iridium and do all of that stuff. Now, people were saying, and I was going to save this for later on in the series, people were saying that we should use Miscraft to make a UU Matter world and kind of be cheaty-cheaty about it. Well, that's actually been changed. You can no longer do that. Um, if we go down to, where's my, oh, was it closer to the top? We're, we're looking for the blocks. There it is. 
So you see all those ones with the big black question mark on it? That means it was a page, but now Miss Crafts doesn't even know what it is anymore. So, like, for instance, we could have made the a world with mob essence. We could have made life essence, the blood magic stuff, biofuel, biomass. Uh, one of them down here, I think these are in order. This thing, these buttons don't seem to work. So I can't sort and I can't like uh, middle click. That doesn't do anything either. But anyway, one of these, if we search for UU, right here, I see two fluid UU matter, but it's got the question mark, which means you can't use it anymore. That is too bad. There is also, um, I think there was a page for Yellorium and Blutonium. I don't think I had them in here. I was kind of... Uh, holding them somewhere else, I believe. But anyway, uh, yeah, those pages have all been updated. We can no longer do that cheaty recipe. However, if we search for UU in NEI here, there is an RF Tools dimlet that we can do liquid UU matter. So I've never messed with these dimlets. I've never messed with RF Tools, really. But if we can make a world with the UU matter, that'll definitely help speed things up. And I would be willing to try that out. So, um, I believe what we have to do is take these dimlets that we currently have. These are all unknown. We have to process them, uh, put it, the unknown dimlet in a dimlet researcher to discover its purpose. So, yeah, once we put it through a dimlet researcher, we have a chance of it becoming the things we want. So, I think that's what I kind of want to do is just uh, examine all these dimlets and see what we can create. Uh, this will create, this will be able to make worlds similar to Miscraft, but it uses power instead, so it's kind of less cheaty, but it's still cheaty, or it can be. Um, so RF Tools Dimlet Researcher. This thing right here, I don't know how fast this thing goes. Machine Frame, okay, you know what, let's start making some patterns here. We might end up making more than one of these things if it goes too slow. Uh, let's just go and craft that real quick. Comparator? I don't know if I have a comparator. Can we make? Nah. We don't have a recipe for a comparator either. Let's make one. Why not? Let's do it. I would rather use the regular nether quartz. Just to use all vanilla stuff for this item. Okay, so we'll make two of those. And there is our pattern for that. And we will just go ahead. Oh, we can't. Ah, yep, yeah, that's right. I didn't make. Well, what didn't I make? Why did that do that? <laughs> Don't do that. What didn't I make here? I don't know, Dimlet. Iron? What are we missing? Didn't I make... Oh, I only made one comparator. I got it. Okay, sorry, sorry. Thought I'd made both of them. Guess I only made the one. So let's put all that in there. Now we'll just do the Dimlet Researcher. Next. Start. Okay, so here's a Dimlet Researcher. What does this look like? Okay, so it's got power. We'll grab one of our test racks. I've been using a whole bunch of them. I did change <laughs> this power setup once again. Uh, it seemed like when I'm using one test rack and pulling off all the different sites to convert from RF using this cable to EU, it, on a server reset, it would forget what it was doing. So I'm trying this out. It seems like when I had... Uh, these set up where there's only one cable it wouldn't forget so yeah we're trying it this way just using more tesseracts and only one cable connection between uh, the tesseract and the EU source I don't know if that's gonna work we'll try it let's stick this guy here we need to set this one up we'll do owner only item mode fluid mode blocked energy mode receive only and let's turn it on okay so now this thing's filling up with power it looks like it's slow to fill up um, so dimlets, so these stack to 16, if we put these in here, what happens? Weather hard thunder dimlet, oh, Dr. Dimlet, zombie pigmen, chicken, uh, biome tropical rainforest, flower field, this actually is going quicker than I thought it would, garden dimlet. Uh, kelp. I just want to go through the stack. Slowness to effect. Uh, nether, amber, ore. Interesting. We can get nether ores. Fire, stone, ore. No, thank you. Molten ardite. Sky body. 
Red sun. Oh, okay. So that is like the color of the sun. Stain clay. Biogas. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Plateau. Interesting. And lime stained glass dimlet. Okay, I guess you can make things out of stained glass. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up an automatic setup here for this. We want to automatically export from our system and research these dimlets. Um, uh, do these, the ones that are researched, do they have a different, a different um, item ID? So this is 6373 and this is 6372. They do. Perfect. So we can take from one item and stick it into like a filing cabinet. Oh, I never set up a recipe for a filing cabinet. Let's do that. Filing, or let's actually just make one. Um, okay, so we will export into this. Let's see, do we have a spot over here where we can put a storage bus? I assume we do. Let's make glass cable and storage bus. All right, so we'll stick this guy. Oh, I don't think it matters where. I'll put it right here. And a storage bus right there, filing cabinet. So let's set the storage bus. Uh, we're gonna need a fuzzy, um, wrong thing. Is it, is it fuzzy card? I can't remember. Acceleration, capacity, memory. Maybe I have never made a pattern for the fuzzy. The fuzzy card. Let's look. Advanced, basic, capacity, crafting, fuzzy card. That's what it was called. Okay. Uh, I guess we still won't make a pattern for it since they don't use these too terribly often. Okay. Match any. We'll stick that right there. And I think if I dump everything into the system, actually, I'm going to set the priority higher on this thing just to be double sure. So if I put one of these in the system, it should be here, and it's not. So why is that not here? I don't know. I can see it over here, but it's not on this one. Um, okay. Bidirectional. Match any. Um, is there another card? Redstone inverter card. Fuzzy crafting capacity basic. Hmm. Okay, well, I tell you guys what. Uh, obviously, I'm missing something. I don't know why that didn't go here unless this isn't. No, this has to be powered. I was going to say, unless this isn't powered, but yeah, I can see there's channel lines on and my wireless wouldn't be working. Or, yeah, my wireless wouldn't be working if that wasn't connected. All right, well, let me figure out what I'm doing wrong here, guys, and we'll be right back. Alright guys, so I figured out what I was doing wrong down below here. I was setting the pattern in the storage bus so it only accept like Firestone ore, for instance. So, no other dimlet would go in there, but if I took the Firestone ore out of the system and put it back in, it would go to the filing cabinet. So what I did is I removed uh, the different patterns here. Uh, we still have the fuzzy card, I think we need this still. But if we look in here, we can see all of our dimlets are in this filing cabinet. So if I take them out and then I shift click them into our terminal here, they all have appeared back in this thing. So that was just me kind of derping, <laughs> but we got it set up. Uh, so this is the way I'm going to automate this just for now. We don't have a lot of dimlets, so I don't need to make like a permanent structure, but we just have a chest for the input, just an item ducked with a reinforced servo. Uh, we have that set to ignore it, so it's always going to be pulling out that chest. We're going into the Dimlet Researcher, and then we're going to be extracting using, uh, you know, another reinforced servo going into our Tesseract here. This actually needs to be set to send only for the item mode. So we're receiving energy to power it, and then that's going to push items into our Tesseract, which goes into our system, and it should be sorted into that filing cabinet. Okay, so Dimlets, let's go ahead and grab a whole bunch of these unknown Dimlets. Yep. And we will go ahead and make these guys known. So, think there was like four more that I could put in there? There we go. Okay, so this is going to automatically be processing and pulling them out. Um, yeah, we will see them in our AE system. In fact, what I probably could do 
is make this so instead of it being bi-directional, that it's only insert only. So we won't see them in our system. If I look for dimlets, we don't see any of those other ones in here. They're only going to exist in our filing cabinet. So this is going to go ahead and process all of these things. Looks like they're kind of sorted by types here, which is good. All the liquids. We're looking for <laughs> liquid UU matter. Uh, we got liquid ardite, which is interesting. Enderium. Wait, enderium? What? Signalarium? Oh my goodness. That's a lot of good stuff so far. Uh, so I tell you guys what, let me go ahead and wait for this thing to process. I want to see if we can get our UU matter dimlet. I'm not sure if we will be able to or not. It'd be really awesome if we could. Very cheaty. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and let this thing uh, do its thing and we'll be back. So I was just thinking, you know, if we need extra iridium, I believe what we could do is use our uncrafting table that we got from the Twilight to uncraft our ultimate hybrids here. Let's see if we can do that. Let's grab this one and that one. I think that should give us enough iridium in the system to make the items that we need. Uh, I've never tried uncrafting one of these. Let's see what happens here. Will it let us? It will. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of here. Yes, these guys right here, the Enriched Scenarium Alloy, these are the expensive parts. So I believe two of those might be enough. Let's put those into our system real quick. And... Is it Quantum? Yeah, this guy right here. Will that allow us? Oh, man, that's going to let us do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start that up. So we got a Quantum Core. So, again, I'm not really sure <laughs> how this all works or what's so different about it, why it's so much more expensive to put all these together into one block. But let's find out. Uh, so we need eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll grab this one as our eighth one. Okay, so we got eight of those. Let's go ahead and craft a quantum. Put those in the system. Oh, I never made the recipe for the quantum. We better do that, too. Uh, so let's do quantum. Okay, there's a recipe. We'll stick that over here. I'll put that down here by the IC2 stuff. Very good. Quantum. Next. Start. Oh, man, we made it. So the quantum solar panel, what does this do? Max output 8,192. That's kind of what I was hoping it would do. So that is double the output of the uh, ultimate hybrids that we put in, but it uses a whole bunch more iridium. That is great. So this thing can store 10 million EU, it looks like. Uh, 8,192 is the maximum power that one of those glass fiber cables can uh, transfer. So we're going to have to set up different power system I think over here like these guys right here won't be able to do much more so we'll just go ahead and pop these off in fact we can kind of fix this wiring and fix that guy right so just one of those should be all we need now so it's gener- oh okay hold on a second max output 8192 generating 4096 oh wait a second here why would I want the quantum solar panel instead of having you know, double the amount of the other ones. That is a good question. Because if we can make 16 of the ultimate hybrids, we could be outputting 8,192. Hmm. Well, that is something I guess I could have looked at in, like, creative mode or whatever. But generating 4,096, that's not bad. That is the same amount of the ultimate hybrids that we put in. But, yeah... With all the extra iridium that it took to create the quantum solar panel, I don't think that's worth it. Uh, what I think that I want to do, we'll leave everything unpowered. Can I uncraft this? I would rather just have a bunch of the ultimate hybrids making 512 than having one of these. Well, let me uncraft it. It will. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and take that guy out. We'll take all of our ultimate hybrids back. I'm going to uncraft this. Yep. Do that, take all these guys back. Okay, we'll just make a bunch of ultimate hybrids instead of the quantum. I did want to check that out and see what it actually did, what was so special about it. But yeah, it seems like it's more expensive than what it's worth. Maybe later on down the road when we have so much iridium it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, we can go ahead and make those just to compact things. But for now, I think the ultimate hybrid solar panels is where we need to be. 
All right, guys. Well, this thing has finished processing all the dimlets, and I was hoping, I was really hoping, <laughs> we'd get a UU Matter dimlet, uh, but we didn't. We got a whole bunch of these other ones. Uh, one thing that I was kind of curious, I saw there was a bunch of liquid dimlets. Let's see which ones we got in here. Uh, molten Ardite, Distilled Water, doesn't really matter. Protein Dimlet, Shiny Dimlet, that's kind of cool. So that's like Infinite Platinum or whatever if we ever make an age with that. We got Steel, Liquid DNA, uh, Huge Liquid Orbs Dimlet. I'm not really sure what Liquid Orbs are. Is that kind of like uh, the IC2 Oil or the Bellcraft Oil, I mean, where you have like... The oil above ground, there's like a big ball of it underground. I don't know. That might be it. Or it might just be like floating spheres in the sky. Don't know. Uh, molten copper. Let's see. Was there anything else in here? Hooch dimlet. <laughs> molten iron. Let's see. Life essence. Crushed ice. Um, resonant ender. You know what? This is rarity five on it. Let's take a look at this. Rarity five. These are probably the rarest ones. I know there's six. Because uh, the one we were looking for, the UU Matter Dimlet, is a rarity of 6, but we didn't get any of those, so that's too bad. So, rarity of 5, Nether Diamond Ores, Air Infused Stone, I'm not really sure what Air Infused Stone is or why that's so rare. Uh, damage Boost 3, I guess that's Strength, right? Haste 2, Liquefacted Coal, Cobalt Ore, Fire Resistance. Resonant Ender, ooh, that could be, well no, that's just Liquid Ender Pearl, right? Yeah, I was thinking that was like Enderium, so no. And then uh, Molten Alumite, do we have, we do have Molten Enderium, and why is that a Rarity 2? That, it seems like the Molten Ender should be a 2, and Molten Enderium should be a 5. I don't know, very weird. But yeah, uh, now the problem is, we don't have any unknown dimlets to research, so we need to get more of those. And I was looking on how to get those, and it looks like you can spawn into one of those worlds made by RF tools. And there's like dungeons and stuff that are in there that contain dimlets. But also you can randomly get dimlets from killing endermen. So I came over here and I fixed up our enderman spawner. I changed some things around. Um, I had like this pipe underneath here moving the liquid XP away and I had like a whole bunch of blocks and stuff blocking light. Anyway, I did that because I forgot to put in the golden apple, the notch apple, into the spawner to ignore spawn requirements. So these things will spawn in the light and all that stuff. Um, so we can turn this on. Another thing I noticed is it seems like the extra utilities uh, item nodes and the world interaction upgrades have been changed a little bit. One of them was enough previously to get all the stuff from the spawner, but it's not so much the case anymore. So I had to put in, I tried two on the back side over here. This is where they originally were. Um, that was leaving some stuff kind of in this area all the way back. So it's like they have a limited range. I think they can only go out eight blocks or something now. Seems pretty limited. But anyway, I added in these other ones up here to get rid of, or to collect all of the stuff that the first two were missing. But yeah, we got all that stuff now. So, um, unknown. Yeah, we've gotten four unknown dimlets. So, while we can collect them, it's a little slow. I would like to try and go into an RF Tools dimension and check out those dungeons. I really haven't messed with RF Tools at all. I've never really messed with those dimension building. I assume it's very similar to Mistcraft. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at that next episode. But yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect a bunch of those unknown dimlets. We'll try and give it a try to get the uh, the UU Matter dimlet. Because I would like to do that if possible. Since we can't do the Mistcraft way. Uh, another thing. I've been AFK for a while now. Letting things go. Uh, we did get more Iridium. We have enough for another ultimate hybrid. I don't know if we have all the stuff in the system ready to go. Oh, actually, we do have this Nether Iridium Ore Dimlet too, which is kind of interesting. Um, that's the... Another one bites the dust, Iridium. It's not this kind. It's this stuff over here. The advanced solar panel stuff. Um, you know, I never did look at all the different types of ores that we got from these Dimlets. So let's see. Ore Gen Bamboo... I was actually kind of hoping that it would say dense twilight form. 
peridot or okay maybe or space okay that's what we need to do so nether salt peter salt or uh that iridium or diamond or okay uh lapis redstone i'm just seeing if there's anything like exceptionally rare in here pig iron that is uh steel right i think that's steel let's see there's the poor lead ore. i'm really not sure what those are poor gold ore. yeah i have no idea Sulfur, saltpeter, and cinnabar, firestone. Yep. Okay, so we got a lot of those. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to make another ultimate. If we have the resources available, I don't know if we do or do not. But we definitely have enough of the iridium. Okay, so I need to make compressed coal balls. All right, so I will work on that off camera. I want to get this UU Matter stuff sped up so we can make more of these much quicker and get everything powered fully like I need. But yeah, I think that is going to do it for this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity, guys. If you have any suggestions, tips, or things I should know about RF tools, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I would like to know everything there is to know about that mod, or at least dimension creation. So yeah, if you guys have any tips for that, let me know. But yep, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.